Welcome to the Capture 2020 tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at plots. Plots live in the Plots category of the Design tab. Here, we can add, delete, and clone plots. Before we do that, though, let's take a look at the Plot mode of the Design views. Let's switch the Alpha view into Plot mode. You can now see that fixtures are drawn with plot symbols and that information about the fixtures are added to an annotation below the symbols. If I switch to the fixtures tab, you can see that the unit, channel and circuit information that I have input is shown automatically in the annotation of the fixture. In plot mode of a view, there is an important feature called plot adjustments. We can enable this by clicking on the broken link icon in the navigator. And when enabled, we can move any object or fixture symbol without disturbing the physical position in the visualization or simulation. In addition to moving the symbols, we can also rotate them, as well as double click on the annotation to move and rotate that individually and separately from the fixture itself. For additional properties and configuration options, you can go to the properties of the fixture, where you will find properties like the focus or other options such as the orientation of the fixture and whether to show information such as the optics or the wattage of the fixture. In addition to this, there is also a whole concept of plot styles where we can define things such as text sizes and which specific fields of information get included in the plot. Let's move on and go back to the plots category though and add our first plot. Press the add button and accept the default name and the edit button to open the plot editor. The plot editor starts off with a blank piece of paper, so the first order of business is to set up the page size. Because the printer's page sizes available are usually restricted to the actual capabilities of your printer, a good workaround is to select a PDF printer in order to access other page sizes. I'm going to go for an A3 landscape in this example. So now that we have the page set up, it's time to add some contents. Right click in the editor to insert any type of inset that you need. And we're going to start off with a view. You can move and resize it using the corner handles, as well as use the navigation buttons to adjust the viewpoint of the view. As you can see, there is a scale property as well that updates automatically as I'm zooming in the view. It's also possible to enter a fixed scale manually, as well as have the scale shown in the corner of the inset. Next, we're going to add a header inset. This can be resized to your needs and automatically picks up information about the project from the project properties in the design tab. This information is shown in the header and supplemented with the document name and description from the properties of the header. Finally, we also have a symbol key inset that I want to show you. This can be resized and used to create both a horizontal as well as a vertical symbol key. It's also possible to configure the symbols themselves to hide individual symbols or to modify the text shown along with a symbol. Once you have finished the layout of your plot, it is time to print or export it. You can use the print button to print directly with a printer or use a PDF printer installed in the system, or, and something we would suggest is using the direct export to PDF option, where all you need to do is select the DPI setting of the plot, and then Capture will export a good 
optimized raster-based PDF plot for you. Thanks for watching. See you soon again.